when a patient is diagnosed with cancer, there are very few treatments that are home runs. It's like finding a needle in the haystack. The human genome has more than 20,000 genes, and we believe that about 300 of those are intimately involved in cancer. With genomic sequencing, we can look for the true Achilles heel of a cancer to identify treatment options, allowing the doctor to plan treatment, not like a fire drill, but more like a chess game. We typically use genomic testing for patients where our treatment options are limited or the standard therapies have already not been successful. And that was certainly the case for Christine. Christine had advanced recurrent clear cell cancer of the ovary, an unusually aggressive and rare histology. I was diagnosed in 2010. I was 30 years old. Over the course of three years, I had had multiple surgeries, radiation, and chemo. Every time I thought I was in remission, it reappeared somewhere else. At one point, I was told that I had probably one month of life left. My husband was the one that said, no, 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 we're not gonna give up on this yet. When I first met with Dr. Chura, his goal was to get me back into remission. Clear cell ovarian cancers are a rare histology, and we often don't know what the best treatment is, especially in the recurrent setting. That's where genomic testing comes into play. At Foundation Medicine, we sequence over 300 genes simultaneously from a patient's tumor sample. We have spent a lot of time developing a process that we have extensively validated to make the results as accurate as scientifically possible. In Christine's case, we saw an activating mutation in the PIK3CA gene and an inactivating mutation in the protein P10, which is a negative regulator of this pathway. Just identifying the gene mutations isn't enough. We're able to contextualize the mutations that we found within the most extensive database of molecular information that's out there. We compare around 160,000 patients, of which about 20 had a combination of mutations that were extremely similar to Christine's case. We can then put this information into the context of the medical literature to identify additional therapy options. Christine's Foundation One report allowed us to identify an alternative treatment for Christine not found on the NCCN guidelines. We elected to go with an mTOR inhibitor, a drug much more commonly used for renal cell carcinoma. Within three months, I received a report that was clear. On her mTOR inhibitor, Christine has had over three and a half years of progression-free survival with minimal side effects and an excellent quality of life. Now, I can actually plan, I can live you know, further out than just the next couple of months. With ovarian cancer, typically each remission gets successively shorter and shorter. We've actually changed the natural history of her disease. That's remarkable. Dr. Chura reported back how exceptionally well she was doing on the therapy. Being able to get this feedback will allow us to learn and help physicians make better suggestions for the next patient with a similar molecular profile. With each Foundation One test that we order, our understanding of cancer grows. It's amazing to think that one day we may speak of a cancer with a P10, pic 3 ca mutation. Who cares where it came from? It's the mutations that we're gonna target. We're gonna improve our survival, we're gonna improve our cure rates, and allow our patients to live much better lives.